Babies, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are mixing up a tube of richly colored blackberry lip gloss. Also, so in addition to being blackberry colored, this lip gloss also stars blackberry seed oil. So mine was a gift from Plants Power. It is a beautiful oil. It has a pretty strong deep green color on its own, uh, though obviously that is you know, countered out by the uh, colorant that I have included. And I just thought that it made a really lovely pairing, you know, blackberry oil, blackberry color, blackberry lip gloss, yeah. So the bulk of this formulation is blackberry seed oil and castor oil, which is a lovely glossy oil, very well suited to lip gloss and kind of lip products in general. And then that oil blend is thickened up. And I presented two different versions of this formulation with different thickeners. Version one, which is vegan, is the thickeners polyamide three. So this is a relatively new to me ingredient. I've actually had it for years, but just finally got around to using it for or something. I bought mine from Making Cosmetics and if you just read through their product description it says like right in the description you know just melt it into some castor oil and you get instant lip gloss. I'm like ooh and then if you check out their sample formulation it's also a lip gloss formulation. So I sort of started there. They used a 20% amount of polyamide 3 and then mentioned that they poured it into sticks. I'm like all right well I don't want this to be a pour into sticks kind of situation so I tried 15 and that was still way too hard. You'll see that later in the video and then I I have that down to where we are now and it's a you know soft spreadable gloss that works in a doe foot applicator tube but I think would also work really well in one of those squeezy tubes with like the slanted dispenser cap thing that you rub on your mouth. Now I know that polyamide 3 is not a super accessible, easy to get ingredient, so I have provided an alternative to that, which is cerebellina. And so we will need to use the cerebellina at a slightly higher usage rate than the polyamide 3, and you do get a slightly different end product, and I do swatch them both towards the end of the video so that you can see. I'd say the polyamide 3 is more glossy, while the cerebellina is a bit creamier, but they're both really lovely products, so honestly just kind of make whichever one you can get the ingredients for. The color for this look Plus comes from a small amount of red 33 dye. So this is a really sort of rich bluey red, like blackberry <laughs> colored dye. If you don't have it, you do have a couple different options. I mean, you could just leave it uncolored, though it will sort of have a greeny color to it because of the blackberry seed oil. You could choose a mica instead, though micas are nowhere near as pigmented as the dye that we've used. So that's going to result in a product that is colored in the tube, but not really on on your mouth. If you want more information on this, I've got a full FAQ on kind of interchanging dyes and micas and how that works or sometimes doesn't work. I'll link to that in the partner blog post, which is as always linked in the description box below this video. I haven't included any essential oils or flavor oils, and I find that this product is you know, sort of smells and tastes just fine on, on its own without that, but if you would like to incorporate some, make sure you're reading the partner blog post. Making this is really simple. It, we're just melting together the heated phase. We'll stir it as it cools to keep it nice and smooth and creamy. Add our cool down phase, which is just vitamin E, and then, uh, yeah, pop it in a tube and we are ready to rock and roll. I think that is enough chat, so let's go make this awesome lip gloss. We'll begin by combining our three base ingredients. So for this batch, I'm going to be using this custard cup. So it's, you know, it's heat resistant, it's quite heavy glass, so it's got good heat capacity and uh, it's nice and easy to stir in. So in here, I already have our thickener. So this is 0.4 grams of polyamide three. Here's a bit of a close up of the ingredient, uh, kind of an interesting, shiny, sort of slightly kind of sticky, wet feeling blobs. If you don't have polyamide three, make sure you're reading the partner blog post. I've provided a alternative formulation that uses cerebellina, which is a modified beeswax that creates oil gels instead of this. It's pretty close, just a slightly different concentration. So 0.4 grams polyamide three, three grams of blackberry seed oil. So this is you know, very on theme, of course. This is one of our star ingredients. 
This was a gift from Plants Power. If you're looking for substitutions, please make sure you're reading the blog post linked in the description box below this video. And 1.45 grams castor oil. And so our last ingredient before we heat things through is our color. So I'm using this red 33 lip liquid. So this is a blend in roughly equal parts of red 33 dye, which is a blackberry colored dye, really bluey red color uh, and castor oil. If you don't have the predispersed version, that's totally okay. You can use the powdered stuff instead. And I've provided directions on how to do that in the blog post linked in the description box below. So make sure you give this a really good thorough shaking to make sure that the dye and castor oil are evenly dispersed. And then we need 0.1 grams. So once you've got everything combined in your little bowl, it's time to melt. So I did try this in a water bath and found that was very slow to no going. So what I would recommend doing is using your oven. So I've been putting this bowl on a cookie sheet in my oven heated to 210 degrees Fahrenheit and then leaving that in there until everything has liquefied. Uh, if you're just making a five gram batch like I am, that won't take very long, maybe 15, 20 minutes, depending on how long it takes your oven to come up to temperature. So, you know, just keep, keep an eye on it. And when everything is completely uniform and you don't see not only any sort of proper blobs, but you can also get kind of wispy bits if it's just partially melted. So when it's completely uniform and you don't see any sort of clear bits in there, uh, pull it out and start stirring. So I just wanted to stop in with a quick, this is not quite what we're looking for check-in. So you can see those blobs, those blobs hanging out at the bottom of not quite fully melted polyamide. So give this a wee bit of a stir to encourage things along and then pop this back in the stove or back in the oven and making sure to get any blobby bits off the spatula so that they can melt into our mixture and not just, you know, live on our spatula. All right, this is looking nice and liquidy and a beautiful blackberry hue as well. So make sure you're scraping all the way around and down, covering the bottom. If you've used the powder dye rather than the predispersed one, this part is also quite important for making sure it is really dispersed. So make sure you are smearing your spatula across the bottom of your little bowl there to break up any clumps of dye. So this is still quite hot and so we're going to you know, keep it moving as it cools. If you're making a bigger batch, you could definitely use a ice bath or a cold water bath to speed this up, but this is a pretty small batch at five grams, so I'm just going to let it cool on its own, though I will shift this to remove the uh, hot pad so that the coolness of the counter can help accelerate the cooling here. So something else that you can do at this point in time is you can adjust the level of pigmentation a bit if you want. Um, it is a good idea if you are adding more pigment to weigh it and note the amount that you have weighed so that you can work that into the formulation for the next time you decide to make it. Uh, but yeah, for if you're just making like a little five gram batch, it's a decent way to do iterating and, and figure out exactly how much pigment you like. As written, this works out to 1% of the red 33 dye. Something to note is that red 33 dye is limited at a maximum usage rate of 3% for lip products. So if you are using more of red 33, make sure you don't exceed that number. So when this has cooled down a bit, we can add their vitamin E. So you're going to need 0 0.05 grams of this. And if you'd like to learn more about the vitamin E that we use in cosmetic formulations, please make sure you are looking up vitamin E or tocopherol in the Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia. So we'll set that aside a bit to continue cooling and show you some of the finished versions. 
So here they are. And this is a packaging that we're going to be using today as well. It's from TKB Trading. Uh, more on that later though. And so we've got the two versions. So check my labels. This is the one that's made with polyamide three. And this is the one that is made with Sarah Bellina. So the percentages are really very similar. It's just that we need more Sarah Bellina than the polyamide three. And so the ratio between the uh, thickener and the liquid oils shifts a little bit, but the amount of color is the same and the inconsistency is really similar. We'll do a little bit of a swatch so that you can see. So this is the polyamide three one. And this is the Sierra Bellina one. So I'd say that the polyamide three one is definitely glossier, but they're both, you know, they're both definitely still glossy. The Sierra Bellina one feels a bit creamier. see that the pigmentation level is very very similar the same uh, has to be expected with the same amount of pigment um, but yeah very very similar results so kind of depending on what you can get definitely you know make either version make whatever appeals to you the polyamide 3 one will be vegan while the one made with cerebellina is not vegan because cerebellina is made from beeswax So as the mixture cools, make sure you are keeping an eye on it and stirring it. Uh, if you don't, you can get a skin forming on top and while well, you can kind of break that up most of the time, if you leave it too long, it can get a little difficult to break it back up and work it back into the gloss. And then you can kind of get a weird kind of gelatinous uh, end product. So this is a version that I made uh, in the development process, it has about twice as much polyamide three as the final one. And of course you can see that it's much more solid, um, <laughs> but I think you can kind of also see that it's kind of blobby and grainy. This is the sort of thing where I think if you were using this much polyamide three, you would want to do a hot pour and let it set all at once rather than kind of agitating it as it cools. It still goes on smoothly. I'm not crazy about that as an aesthetic. It kind of just looks like blackberry jelly, um, which I love on toast, but yeah, kind of as, as, a, as a cosmetic product just wasn't my favorite look. I am still quite new to polyamide 3, so I would be interested in hearing your experiences working with it. This is just what I have observed from working with developing this formulation. There, you can see the little bit of jelloidness and then we want to kind of break that up and keep it moving so that it stays nice and smooth. So once the mixture has cooled, uh, it's time to package it up. So for packaging, I'm going to be using this five milliliter sort of doe foot gloss container from TKB Trading. So something that I love about this one is it's got a really wide orifice for filling. So we don't need a funnel, we don't need a syringe, it's, it's fantastic. And then it's got you know, quite a generously sized orifice reducer uh, to go with that uh, nice big orifice, which definitely needs reducing for uh, use, but for filling, it's brilliant. I've if you were doing a lot of these, this would be a very tedious way to fill it, but I've kind of found that just like dropping it in a blob at a time bloop, is working just fine. And there we are. So we just made a rich and glossy blackberry lip gloss starring blackberry seed oil 
with a beautiful blackberry-ish tint to it. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and please remember to read the partner blog post for the variation using Cirabellina as the thickener and more information on the formulation in general, including links to places to buy all the ingredients, information on substitutions, scaling, shelf life, and a whole lot more. But yeah, thank you so, so much. Have an awesome day and I'll see you next time.